Well, make sure, Mr. President, when you go and watch the video, make sure to click the link in the description. And while you're there, make sure to subscribe and smash that like button. <laughs> it's like he's, oh my God, Alex okay. Jones, the YouTuber, even though he's not on YouTube anymore. I just realized that. I assume, so. don't you think, the Bilderbergs gave it to the lizard yeah, people who took it in the tiny airplanes. Yeah. Yeah. The weather weapons. Yeah. Weather weapons are making them do it. Gay, fro gay frogs. <laughs> the gay frogs. They're turning the freaking frogs gay is what they're doing. It's the hormone mimickers in the juice boxes that they're giving to children. Bob Seska, my voice toy. I already, we've already discussed how uh, when I rent a bike, when I come to D.C. for Sexy Liberal, we're going to go for a ride. There's a bike path by the Watergate, and I'm going to make Bob Seska do uh, G. Gordon Liddy the entire ride. Yes, yes that's right. And I'll kill a man with a pencil. If it gets in my way, a bicycle. I'll be Stay sitting out of Stephanie Miller's way. I'll be sitting on a tandem right behind your high pockets. I assume. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I Can thought it would be funny if we switched bicycles and I rode the really small, like Stephanie Miller sized bicycle, and then you rode the giant bicycle. And we could do, we could take that on the road. Right. Like Pee Wee. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'm trying to ride my bike. Okay. All right. So, wait, can you explain to people why G. Gordon Liddy called you High Pockets? Because I'm very, very tall. Yes. I'm very, very tall. And he Super was a very pockets. diminutive he man, uh -huh. which he was. he was obviously overcompensating for. If you want to see the centerpiece, of what was wrong with G. Gordon Liddy. It's like a little teeny tiny guy. Like he could wear a little, wear raspberry as a hat. Okay. <laughs> you have a lot of great G. Gordon Liddy stories because you worked with him. I only have the one yeah. of him hitting on me at the radio convention yes. that we were at. Yeah. Oh, right in front of his wife. He's like, yeah. ah, you're a good looking lady. What are you doing lighter? I was like, <laughs> me? Ew. Um, anyway. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah. Oh, I have lots of fun stories. Like watching G. Gordon Liddy slip on the ice and land right on his bald head. That was, and and we laughed. We, you know, a bunch of DJs standing in the window, you know, looking out and seeing him slip and fall. Oh, we had a fun laugh at the Watergate architect slipping on the ice. <laughs> and then he killed you, tried to kill you with a pencil. Okay. Then he tried to kill me with a pencil, yes. He, you know, he used to carry a knife in a holster on his ankle. <laughs> Because he wasn't allowed to carry firearms, he had this like ninja blade that you would get at like a Renaissance fair or yeah. something like that. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, I was always terrified of that thing, Wait, man. One last I, I thought one. for sure. Why was it your David Letterman picture that enraged him? It was Buzz's David Letterman picture, and oh. then but Gordon Liddy asked me to take it down. I said, "No, that's Buzz's picture. You're going to have to ask him or Don or Mike or one of those guys." And oh my God, he made a noise like this as he wandered away. He just went. Meow. Kind of just like, <laughs> like a <laughs> like a Batman off. like a Batman villain. Yes, okay. exactly. All like right. Penguin, exactly. And then he <laughs> and then he tried to kill you with a pencil. All right, let's then move did, on yes. to today's. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah. Um, he okay. is kind of a Batman villain. Let's yeah. move on from Nixon's sort of garden variety cr criminality to, <laughs> first of all, you asked, what are the legal ramifications, if any, for repeatedly claiming in a lawsuit that you're the president of the United States with executive privilege when you're not? Um, it was, oh, man. It would be that... like if I identified myself as uh, America's junior Miss fourth runner up. Yeah. Or Miss Congeniality, document... 1979. Oops. That was like a, a legal Mad Libs. You know, it's like Donald Trump sat down with his uh, lawyers and they went through yeah. and, and they just had him fill in the blanks. And they had to revise it a bunch of times because, of course, all the blanks were filled in with fart, some variation right. of fart, <laughs> just like kids do with Mad Libs, naturally. And so that's maybe why there was a whole conflict with his lawyers where... He's got three lawyers signed on to the bottom of that document. One's from Fort Lauderdale, one's from Baltimore, and another one's from Washington, D.C. So clearly, Donald Trump has his pick of any right. lawyer he wants that's right. in that jurisdiction. Well, yeah. just this the narrow letter, uh, Hal Sparks, who confirmed yesterday that he is you before he we get him wet and feed him after midnight <laughs> yes I saw. but i this so john solomon is the right wing guy that's trump the trumpy right that is so yeah. he's supposed to he's the uh, former fox news contributor trump pro trump founder of just the news he defended his bombshell leak 
quote unquote about the FBI search and wound up declaring that Joe Biden is the man who defeated Donald Trump in 2020. Going to your tweet and what you say almost every day, Trump always makes things worse for Trump because this journalists and experts across the political media world mock Solomon's scoop, which they say had the opposite of the intended effect. Critics pointed out Solomon's own report showed that Biden deferred to independent agencies, that Trump and his team were given plenty of opportunities to comply, but drew out the process and that the seized materials in question were hair on fire serious. Um, I, I, it is hard to, people are just sort of stunned at the things he yeah. puts out that he thinks somehow are going to help him that only make things worse, right? Yeah, that's right. It's, it's evident in this document, this filing that was, uh, that w- we saw the other day, which was just absolutely ludicrous, where in fact, in this document, he confesses to violating the Presidential Records Act. It's just like one thing after another. He's like a drunk. He's like he's like Otis from the Andy Griffith Show, just stumbling into this giant room full of rakes, and the rakes are hitting him in the face, and he just can't stop stumbling. He's like falling in. He's just like back pedals into like yeah. a, a propeller spinning. You know, it, it's just he's constantly <laughs> making things worse for himself. And I, I hate to keep hitting that slogan. <laughs> But it, it, he keeps proving me right on that. Every time yeah. Donald Trump opens his mouth, he just falls into <laughs> another possible. I mean, my God, we a, may a be a warehouse at, full of lawyers stepping on rakes, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we may be looking at the, the president uh, being charged with aiding and abetting uh, lying to the FBI. Yes, because of yes. Christina Bob signing that document saying that. Well, we've handed over all the documents. Uh, oh, but wait. Yes. I <laughs> oh, mean, my God. There's this right. Steve, other room. Steve Vladek said the May 10th letter from NARA is damning to the former president on a number of levels, not the least of which the lack of reference to a claim by Trump's representatives that he had declassified any of the classified material that were quite specifically at issue. It's like he can't they can't even keep track of his own lies. Right. right? <laughs> now yeah, that's just, yeah. oh, never mind that now. Um, oh, yeah. Right. Duty to warn said Trump ally John Solomon released a letter to Trump from NARA back in May in Keystone Cop fashion. The letter is incredibly damning for Trump. It's hard evidence that Trump knew the documents were classified and did not belong to him. No mention of the mythical declassification. I mean, it's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and plus there were uh, special access program documents, uh, apparently, right. in this uh, all these boxes sitting down there in Mar-a-Lago under the omelet bar where anyone can wander in and out right. of that room it's it's amazing yeah. and so uh yeah special uh, the special access program documents i'm wondering if donald trump saw sap and thought it was save america pack and that's why he kept them <laughs> i'm waiting for that to be the excuse oh these were all save america pack documents oh i'm a sap oh i'm a sap is that it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, well, that's well, the, the great irony of Save America Pack, is it stands for SAP. Yes, of course. Yeah. What, our are, friend Glenn Kirshner tweeted Donald Trump's personal handling. That's the other thing that was revealed. Mm-hmm. Personal handling of stolen classified documents increases the odds that he will be indicted for mishandling classified <laughs> and national defense yeah. information, which we know from him. Okay. Yeah. Um, Right. Uh, And Susan, one last said, said, lawyers for Trump who lied to the courts repeatedly about made up election fraud, made copies of election system software and shared it with hackers. Let that sink in. That's the other huge story, Bob, that we're not because of the Mar-a-Lago story. I mean, I don't know if you watch happen to watch Nicole Wallace yesterday, but she was saying this is the most frightening thing she said on her show in all of the years of covering Donald Trump, that this information has already been shared with it's out there now. So yeah. I think the expert was saying we either have to go to paper or radically redesign the election system because Trump's lawyers have, have given up to, you name it, foreign mm-hmm. adversaries, whoever, the, oh, the, yeah. the yeah. election data, our, our, how our election system runs. Yeah, it's just incredible. And they try to couch it in this idea of, oh, we're just expressing our dissatisfaction with the results of the election. We're allowed to do that in a free country. You're allowed to challenge the results of an election. Yeah, but you're not allowed to share sensitive voter information with freaks and weirdos that you found on the Internet. That's and that's not... what we were afraid of at the time, Bob, is they knew yeah. that the election wasn't stolen. They were trying to get that information to impact future elections. And it's mm-hmm. anyway, that's yeah. just. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Another well, whole yeah, thing to be I mean, terrified there, there of. Are all kinds of. There are all kinds of weird things circulating around these stories that we we have no choice but to ask where their values are when they're engaging in these schemes. For example, uh, last night, here's a good example. 
Laura Loomer last night, yeah. uh, it, it, after she lost her primary campaign. Is not conceding. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not refusing not. to concede. Well, here's another case where, oh, we, do, didn't it used to be that we used to frown upon people who were sore losers after losing something? Yeah. I mean, the, the, when are we going to get back to those? Remember are Gore Lieberman? They changed it to sore loser man. Because, yeah, 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 exactly. Because he, yeah, I don't yeah. know what's the word I'm looking for. One, right. Florida, if they finish the counting and the presidency. But that's not important now, Bob. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Well, there's 74 million people, at least in the United States right now, who think it's just fine and, and great if you act like a sore loser, if you act like a whiny diaper baby when you lose something, whether it's Donald Trump or Laura Loom or anyone else. Yeah. Th this has become like a branded behavior on the Republican side. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't understand where those values were just discarded. I don't know how that has happened. And we've seen that, uh, whether you're a bully or so, some other terrible thing that we were taught as children not to be. And that's the Republican yeah. brand, all yeah. of those things. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, by the way, uh, agree with your alter ego, uh, House Parks, uh, who said, <laughs> your superhero alter ego. You said Trump's exploiting the quote-unquote possibility of running solely as a legal defense, just like he used the possibility of running to boost ratings for Celebrity Apprentice in 2012. Privately, he knows he'll lose his legal defense lifeline from Save America PAC and the RNC if he runs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I, so are you, because I think like Hal was saying, that's not a get out of jail free card. He keeps saying, oh, if I announce, they can't get me. And, it, you know, I think Hal was saying it's like, you know, I just robbed a bank. I'm running for mayor. You know, like, it's yeah, not, yeah. right. This is the most entertaining. One of the most entertaining aspects about this is that Donald Trump seriously is trapped. If he runs, right. as I've been saying, if he runs for president, he's going to lose Save America PAC. He's going to lose SAP. And he's also going to lose the RNC, which has been paying a lot of his legal bills, if not all of his legal bills. So Donald Trump is kind of stuck between his need for cash and his little tiny brittle ego and that need to yeah. run for president again so he's really really trapped there so and the the, the funny thing about him uh and and running and whether or not that's going to free him from legal jeopardy yeah it goes back to that document, the uh, the lawsuit filing from the other day, where right at the beginning of the introduction, Donald Trump says, or his lawyers say, or a combination of the two, politics should never come into consideration when it comes to justice in this country. And then the very next sentence is, uh, I'm the front runner for the 2024 election, so I'm untouchable. <laughs> both right. in the primary and the judge. So you're bringing politics into a legal filing. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I it's all we politics. By oh, the way, yeah. speaking of which, good day yesterday, as we've been saying for Democrats, and I love you always have to remind people, the worst predicators of election outcomes, yard signs, internet straw polls, crowd size, yes. boat parade attendance. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Marjorie Taylor Greene literally said, oh, we know that Biden didn't win Georgia because boats. <laughs> yeah, right. When did they, again, that's another thing. When did that suddenly become a valid argument? Right. That the size of your boat parade predicts the outcome of your election. That yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. This goes back like at least two decades that we've been talking about this, especially in the blogosphere, where every time there's another election, oh, look at all the yard signs I've got. Right. I'm going to win now. I mean, I remember right. there was a, a Virginia gubernatorial race where I think Terry McCall, it was the first time Terry McAuliffe was elected. Yeah. There was this huge competition for which candidate could festoon the countryside with uh, the most yard signs. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, you're just, we're just wasting money. Right. I, I almost said a profanity there. Yes. You're, you're Thank you for just that. wasting, <laughs> wasting your donor's money on these yard signs, which ultimately have zero bearing on whether you're going to win. And the same goes for these ridiculous uh, boat parades yeah. and the, and the golf cart parades, those are the funniest ones because right. they look most like a circus. And I don't know who uh, told Ron DeSantis that uh, Top Gun ad was a good idea, but you are the only man I know that looks good and macho in a helmet, Bob Seska. Ron DeSantis, <laughs> someone put it right next to Dukakis. You're like, oh, dude, oh. no. The whole, oh, look at what a tough uh, guy yeah, I am. No. I'm a Top yeah. Gun. Oh, my God. Um, it, he actually, uh, he was talking about fighting wokeness and, uh, the other day, and you said mediocre, mediocre hack politician incites violence against American citizens. Anyone who insists this creepazoid is a normal Republican shouldn't be taken seriously. But there he is again yeah. with this fake tough guy ad, you know, pretending he's a fighter pilot against the mm -hmm. mainstream media or whatever, right? 
And we're still not sure what exactly they're defining woke to be. I mean, I'm I'm fairly certain it's meant to be partly at least a dog whistle for the unwoke. Yeah. I think that's I was kind just of gonna say saying. I woke to me it means I don't know, don't be a D to someone that looks different than you do. I isn't that what woke yeah, is? Yeah. Just I don't know. But, be tolerant. But people. now, yeah. But but he swore that uh, woke that Florida is where woke goes to die. Right. He said right. Mm-hmm. That, that's I mean that's an insane statement to make about your uh, fellow yeah. American citizens, people who you preside over yeah. in that state. He governor. If you think gay th- is not, say, you say gay, and you also think maybe slavery was bad. That's apparently <laughs> yeah, yeah, woke. Yeah. For Ron DeSantis, yeah. Right. Well, DeSantis is the governor of the entire state of Florida. Ostensibly, at least half of that state is filled with people who are, you know, enlightened, who like inclusion and civil rights and things like that. Well, those people should just die. I mean, that's essentially the... Uh, the message that he's trying to send. If you believe in these things, you know, like equality, <laughs> you should either leave or die because he is going to fight you yeah, there. Yeah. Um, it's an be- incredible statement to make. Because of all the kinds of nerd you are, you're mostly a West Wing nerd, the sh- TV show yes. West Wing. Of course, you retweeted <laughs> right. Bradley Whitford, who said, periodic mm-hmm. reminder to the press that if it's raining and some bat fascist cult leader says it isn't your job is not to report to us that there are differing views about the weather it's to look out the window and you said a thousand times this uh i mean i just everybody is bringing it up now bob but it's like our head is going to explode every day when you remember the coverage of hillary clinton's completely inadvertent right uh you know the the two whatever small c headings that she might have missed on it inadvertently Right. Yeah. And from, on, from right. her emails to what Donald Trump has done and is do and is doing presently. Right. Yeah. It, it's and this story that's going around about CNN and they're they're trying to work more conservative points of view right. into their broadcast day. And, yeah. Good timing in time doing. for the blue tsunami that is coming in November. Yes. But okay. Yeah. The, that approach basically demands that we never ever take cnn seriously ever again yeah there are some great reporters over there i love jim acosta and and several others but at the same time if that approach is coming down from the executive level that we're going to do this now we're going to taint our news day with more anti-joe biden more conservative points of view don't watch cnn the 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 main bias at cnn should be on reporting the facts i mean anyone who's not doing that yeah. can't be trusted on cable news or print or the internet or wherever it, it is just uh i don't know how they can look themselves in the mirror or sleep at night yeah knowing that that's out there in the world that they're just flim flam artists yeah